Matt Judon was franchise tagged by the Baltimore Ravens this year. And the salary this year is a right around $16.8 million. And I put a poll up, and, you know, the results of the poll is they wanted me to do a video, you know, explaining or trying to see is Matt Judon worth $16.8 million or any more money that he may get if we re-sign him after this season. And so, first of all, I want to tell you where the $16.8 million, where that number comes from. If you don't know when a player's franchise tagged, they take the highest four salaries at the in the league at the position he's listed as, and he gets the average average of it. So that's where the sixteen point eight million come from, which is a, a lot of money, you know, a lot of money for you know a top tier defensive end or outside linebacker, whichever he's listed as. I don't remember which one he's listed as, but we're gonna dive into this and and see if the production equals the money. And so for the next few minutes, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about some people um, where they're paid and their production and see how it equals up and try to figure out is Matt Judon worth the money? And is it simply stats? The stats simply equal production or is there other factors that, you know, make him worth 16.8 or more million dollars to the Baltimore Ravens? So let me explain my process to you a little bit. Uh, first thing I started to do was look for stats. I checked the uh, next gen stats on NFL.com. And the only sack related stat they really had there was like the fastest sack. Like I guess the, the quickest people to get to the quarterback and make a sack. And he wasn't on that list. So that's that's not a good or a bad thing. That's, I just was checking it to see if there was some kind of outstanding stat that you know I may could add in this video. Uh, secondly, I went to Pro Football Reference, and I got his regular stats, and those are the stats you see on the thumbnail: uh, nine and a half sacks, fifty-four tackles, thirty-three QB hits, and four forced fumbles. Now, what I what I'm going to do now is take those numbers and compare them to the top guys in the league, and then we're going to get the uh, top guys in the league and show you their salaries and see if their production matches up with their salaries and then compare that to Matt Judon's production and see if it matches up with his salary. And then toward the end, I'm going to take one guy specifically, which is going to be Zadarius Smith and look at his chart as a Raven. And then to get that big payday from green Bay and see if Judon follows that same, you know, lineage to a big payday. All right. Cue the intro. Let's get it rolling. So to start us off, let's look at stats. 54 tackles, 4 forced fumbles, 9.5 sacks, 33 QB hits. And the main stats for a guy that plays his position are sacks, and I'm going to say QB hits because they affect how fast or how quick the QB has to get rid of the ball. Um, and that kind of, you know, relates to QB hurries. The more hits you get on the QB, the more he's inclined to look at the rush instead of his receivers downfield. So the two main stats we're going to focus in on are sacks and QB hits. So this is your sack leader from 2019. Uh, it's Tampa Bay defensive end slash outside linebacker Shaquille Barrett. I'm going to run through his stats for the 2019 season. He had um, 58 tackles, 13, no, not 13, 19 tackles for loss, 37 QB hits, um, and 19 and a half sacks. 19 and a half. And just to, to, to talk about him for a minute, just look at how uh, athletic he is and how he you know, gives these guys the business because not only can he rush the pass, but he can also drop and, you know, play some flats or some curl flats or some seam flats from time to time. But he gets after the quarterback from the edge. And just relentless. Was initially blocked in this play and just, just fought back. You know, just kept fighting. Just kept fighting. He's in the left side of your screen, standing up. Initially blocked. First move didn't work. Just kept fighting. Just kept fighting. You get a lot of effort out of that kid. 
and he he's bounced around. He's not a a home homegrown Tampa Bay Buccaneer. That's his first year in Tampa Bay. This kid was on the same team with Cleo Mack, so he obviously picked up some stuff. In two thousand from fourteen to eighteen, he was with Denver, and he's listed as an outside linebacker. But he gets you know he plays defensive end and a stand up outside linebacker. He gets to the QB, relentless. Let's watch one more play. That time he was just unblocked. So anybody can do. I could have did that. But still, he led the league with sacks, nineteen and a half. Barrett's salary, currently fifteen point eight mil. That's one mil left than Zadari is going to get this year. His current salary is fifteen point eight mil. The next guy on this list is Chandler Jones. He's a three-time Pro Bowler. Two-time All-Pro and a one-time Super Bowl champ with the Patriots. Uh, Chandler Jones was with New England from 2012 until um, 2016. Moved over to the Arizona Cardinals in 2016 for the 2016 season. Um, let's run his stat line. 50, 53 tackles, 11 tackles for loss, 26 QB hits, and 19 sacks. So he was a half a sack behind Shaquille Barrett for the league lead. This is the number two guy and for as far as sacks in the NFL. Uh, Chandler Jones gives you kind of that same body style as Barrett. Look at that. Just going to work on the left tackle. Effort. Huge effort. Huge effort. And you know he picked up some things from Willie McGinnis. Feed the double team, which it was kind of like a, a chip by the tight end, which kind of helped uh, hurt the tackle. I'm sorry. Let's take another. Let's take another look at a sack. Same game, just effort, just effort. Chasing Russ down, just effort. Getting sacks is a lot of effort. It takes a lot out of you. It's a lot of effort, and you got to constantly have that effort all game. Got to constantly have that effort all game. That's just the stick to it of this. I think I heard that on ESPN one day. Stick to it of this. The ability to stick to whatever you're doing. So watch him standing up again. Unblocked. So apparently being unblocked helps in these sack numbers because the last play we saw, or one of the plays we saw from Shaquille Baird was unblocked. And this one, that last, this play right here just is an unblocked guy. But Chandler Jones, his salary, 16.5. So that's three hundred thousand dollars less than Judon, and this man had nineteen sacks. Three hundred thousand dollars less than what Judon's getting this year, and you got nineteen sacks out of it. Next on the list is Cameron Jordan, New Orleans Saints. One of the guys I really hate seeing on the other side of the ball, uh, especially playing Madden, because he's so quick against the run and the pass. And like you saw in that video just there, he loves stacking it up. He he stacked the numbers up, stacked the sacks up, stacked the production up. And he's really a defensive end that can stand up and do other stuff. But, you know, tight end had him, then they had a guard pull on the rollout, no chance. Going to a different level. Um, So let's look at Cam's numbers. He's a five-time Pro Bowler. Uh, first time he made All-Pro, I think, was this year. Uh, been with New Orleans since 2011. Uh, for his numbers, he had 53 tackles, 15 tackle for losses, 25 QB hits, and 15 and a half sacks. So the number three guy in our sack list is Cameron Jordan. Number one was Shaquille Barrett. Number two was Chandler Jones. Shaquille with 19 and a half, Chandler with 19, and then you drop down to Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan salary. And as much production as you get out of him, look at that bull rush. In the run and the pass, 17.5. 17.5. So out of the people on this list, including Judon, Cam Jordan is the highest paid. He's the highest paid. He was third in the lead in sacks. But he's all, he also gives you that same intensity, that same edge setting in the run game. He's not just a sack guy. So I can understand you know, Cam Jordan with his salary and whatnot because he 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 changes the game, actually. He can he can shut you down 
in the run game and the pass game. He can get to a point where you would just run the ball left against the Saints. You just like your all your runs would be left, and then when you're pass blocking, you got the double right every time. You got to send like see how they just send help over there to help the tackle, help the tackle. You got to do that all the time, so that that leaves other guys opportunities to, you know, to come and but he's still getting production. Look at Freeman looking at him the whole time. Even before the plays change, Freeman looking over there. Scanning again. He know where he's going. He's still cutting his eyes over there. Because they know that guy is a problem. That guy's a problem and he still got the sack. He's priority number one when you look at the line. And he still gets the sack. And again, he comes in at $17.5 million, which is less than a million dollars more than what Judon you know, is going to play under this year. Now let's take a look at our guy, Matthew Judon. Um, they have him listed as a defensive end. So there's the first difference right there. Shaquille Barrett is listed as an outside linebacker. Chandler Jones was listed as an outside linebacker. Cam Jordan was listed as a defensive end. So that's that's the difference right there. I think I'm going to go back and see, find the top four defensive ends and, and check their salaries too at the end. So that's a little added thing I'll add to the end of this video. But um, let's look at the production for our guy. And we already know it because it's in the top of the video, but just for uh, continuity's sake. 54 tackles, 14 tackles for loss, 33 QB hits, 9.5 sacks. Did, we didn't get the double-digit sacks, 9.5 sacks. And that's – didn't get the double digits after losing – Zadari Smith, Terrell Suggs, and um, I think those are two main the two main guys we lost last year that that accounted for sacks. So, um, with that being said, didn't get the double digits. The year before that, he had. Let me just run down his his years with the Ravens. His fresh, I said freshman, <laughs> his rookie year, four sacks. Uh, sophomore year, second year, 2017, eight sacks. Dipped down in 2018 and had seven, but we had a lot of stuff going on, you know, defensively. Uh, Suggs was getting sacks. Um, Zadarius was coming into his own. Um, McPhee was, you know, was I think was healthy then. And it just, you know, but anyway, bounced back last year in a contract year and got nine and a half sacks. Nine and a half sacks. In which the defense didn't play a lot of – a ton of snaps because we ball controlled a lot and they did they had a lot of time to get on the field and get off get on the field and get off but being franchise tagged and making that amount of money we we need to see more sex we need to see more sex especially if he wants to you know get that type of money and more next year from a team uh, especially with the potential salary cap not moving or potentially even going down. Uh, nine and a half sacks for him, for his personal pocket, is probably going to need to go up. Unless he just have a monster game where he's impacting it in other ways other than sacks. All right. The other stat I want to take a look at from this picture is QB hits. And the reason I think this stat is so important, and I talked about it earlier in the video, is if you can get a QB to start focusing on the rush early in his drawback and not look at what the receivers or the DBs or the linebackers are doing, you have a great chance of affecting the game. And QB hits are not counted as sacks, but they are, I'm not going to say just as important, but they're a notch up under there because I know if I'm playing QB and you constantly busting me in my face, I'm going to start to pay attention to you as a defensive end, nose tackle, or three tackle, whatever position you play, rather than, you know, trying to see where the drops the linebackers are, see if it's one high, two high, or if they're press or zone. That adds to your defense, and it, it messes with the quarterback mentally. So I'm, we're going to look at the top three guys in the league and QB hits and see where their salaries go also. Look who's back at the top of this list as far as QB hits. 
Shaquille Barrett. Number one in sacks. Number one in QB hits. So potentially there could have been another 10 or so sacks he possibly couldn't got, could have gotten because he led the league with QB hits at 37. 37 QB hits. So he potentially, potentially, I know you're only seeing sacks right now, potentially could have had another 5 to 10 or 15 sacks depending on how long the quarterback held the ball. That's amazing. To think this guy could have had a... 30-ish sacks, possibly. Because if you, you know, just take half of those hits and, you know, maybe turn them into sacks, that's 15. So that's pushing, that's 34-ish sacks. Because the difference between a QB hit and a sack is probably a, a half a ten, a half a second or a second because you know if you hit him any later than that, it's a penalty. And then the stat doesn't count. You know if you hit him, like, uh, uh, like when you play flag football, you're there a thousand Mississippi. So you know if you hit him after that first Mississippi or one Mississippi or whatever, you're probably going to get a flag. So that's just how close he was to another, let's say, 15 sacks, if you count half of those. And probably more than that because it's 37. So let's say another, um, what's that, 16, 18? Yeah, 18. Right in 18. Um, again, he makes 15.8 mil. Next on this list of QB hits is our guy, Matt Judon, which is, in my opinion, where the conversation turns toward his favor. Because, yes, he only had nine and a half sacks. But, like I said with Barrett, you take those QB hits and kind of, you know, cut them in half, which is, for him, it's right at 16, 16 and a half. He could potentially hit 20, 25 sacks. He's within a, a second of having 15 more sacks. And if he would have had 20 plus sacks, this 16 million would be a steal. It wouldn't even be a conversation. Is he worth the money? But just think about, like I said earlier, the QB hits. You know, just let's think about Tom Brady for a second. And um, I probably should have put more highlights from that game on here. Everybody knows in order to rattle Tom Brady or to beat Tom Brady when he was in New England defensively, you had to get pressure on him, hit him, and cover his um, receivers in man in short routes. That was the best way and the most effective, effective way to beat Tom. But everybody didn't have the personnel to get pressure on him and to cover his guys, you know, in five to 15 yard spaces, like ASAP and man. So, you know, everybody could, everybody knew the plan. They just couldn't do it because Tom was so good, but getting hits on him, which the Ravens pretty much always do um, in playoff games and in regular season games, we've always been able to get pressure on Tom Brady and get him to start looking at the rush rather than, you know, dissecting the defense. So if, Judah had, you know, cashed in on half of these QB hits. We'd be looking at 20 plus sacks. And is he worth $16 million? Wouldn't be even a video. It would be a steal. This, this fran the franchise tagging of Judah would be a steal. So this is where the, the argument turns to, in Judah's favor. Yes, he's nowhere close to the top of the list in sacks. But in these QB hits, he's number two in the league. Number two. Let's look at the number three guy. So this next guy on the list, I really didn't want to put him up there. But you got to because the numbers don't lie. And, you know, stats-based information is what we're about. Data-driven decisions. Data-driven information. It's T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt's a two-time Pro Bowler. Uh, One-time All-Pro already. And on his third season. Um... Coming in with 36 QB hits. Let me check my math real quick. Yes, 36 QB hits. Um, and one thing you notice about T.J. Watt, obviously, you know, J.J.'s his brother, and J.J.'s one of the best to ever do it, is his effort. His effort. He's relentless off that edge. It doesn't hurt him that he has Bud Dupree on the other end 
and you saw you guys saw Bud Dupree in a previous video I did versus Ryan Stanley and Dupree didn't do much but Stanley's probably one of the better left tackles if not the best left tackle in the game but um TJ Watt's an animal man coming off that edge relentless effort watch what he does to Cody Ford here and Cody Ford's a rookie the t uh, tight end kind of half ass blocks him and then Cody Ford doesn't stand a chance doesn't stand a chance because of his effort his technique his attention to detail so he's second on the list with 36 QB hits. And so if we take those and kind of half them up and say their potential sacks, that's what, 18? Yeah, 18. And he had 14 and a half sacks. In his third year, he had 14 and a half sacks. Compared to our guy that had nine and a half. But we're talking about QB hits right now. He potentially could have had 30-ish Sacks. I know it's an outlandish number, but let's stay with stay with consistency. I was doing it for everybody else, so I'm gonna do it for Watt also. And um, the crazy thing about what the production Pittsburgh is getting out of T.J. Watt is the salary he's making. Not even three million dollars. <laughs> first round pick, um, number thirty in the first round, 2017 draft. Not even $3 million. He's making $2.3 million for 14 and a half sacks, 36 QB hits, 55 tackles, eight forced fumbles. I think that's spe speaking of, right on time, eight forced fumbles. Still, TJ White. So, getting back to the point earlier, I talked about Zadarius Smith and his progression as a Baltimore Raven as compared to Judon. So, on the chart you see in front of you, uh, the left side is obviously Zadarius Smith. The right is Judon. Let's look at that last year Zadarius was in Baltimore. He had eight and a half sacks, which is one sack less than um, Judon. Um, he had 25 QB hits, which is eight less than Judon. And he ended up getting a four-year, $66 million contract with uh, Green Bay. Uh, his base salary is 16.5, and he had a nice uh, signing bonus. Um, so, with that being said, Judon's numbers are better than Smith's last numbers in Baltimore, and to think he's going to get anything less than, you know, because basically they have the same. They basically have the same salary now going into this year because of the franchise tag. But to think Judon's going to get anything less than what he got this year is probably crazy looking at especially when you look at the numbers side by side smith's on the left judon's on the right and smith's last year in baltimore he had eight and a half sacks 25 qb hits judon last year even though he's still gonna be in baltimore again this year and we paid him because we franchise tagged him nine and a half sacks 33 qb hits so that's proof in the pudding right there that judon's gonna get that bad even more so next year so as i'm putting the finishing touches on this video i, I stand corrected judon was not labeled a defensive end he was labeled an outside linebacker and i know i said i was going to give you a list of guys that you know kind of made up his salary and i was looking at the defensive ends and i realized these numbers don't match and even though i was using pro football reference for a lot of my research they have him listed as defensive end but when i actually looked up his franchise information Baltimore listed him as an outside linebacker, which saved them money. So, um, and the top outside linebacker guys are Von Miller at 19 mil, uh, Olivier Vernon, uh, I think plays for the Browns at 17 mil. The next person on the list was Zadari Smith at 16.5. And I looked at the top 25 defensive players, so they had defensive ends, cornerbacks, outside linebackers, inside linebackers. So there wasn't a fourth, uh, outside linebacker on there so Judon fit right in the middle which is it adds up he fit right in the middle of Von Miller and whoever was under Zadarius at 16.5 so that's that number right there the Baltimore Ravens saved themselves some money by listing him as an outside linebacker because the top player was defensive end I think Aaron Donald was second at 22 but the top guy, defensive end-wise, was Khalil Mack at 23-5, Aaron Donald at 22-5. And I was thinking, hold on, 16-5 don't, don't match with these first two numbers. 
But that's when I realized that the Baltimore Ravens listed Judon as a outside linebacker, which saved them probably about six million, right around three to six million dollars in the, these negotiations. Because twenty twenty three five, twenty two five, uh, Frank Clark at twenty point eight and D Law at twenty one, they've been in the twenty million dollar range. So now we get to the point where I'm going to answer the question. Is Matt Judon worth $16.5 million or more that he may get potentially next season, depending on how the season goes? The answer from me is yes, he is. He's worth it because pass rushers are at a premium in this league. They can change the game. They can, uh, they can win you games. They can help bring you back in games you know when you're down they can they're game changers they're game changers and they're a dime a dozen there's not a ton of guys out there that can change games like that and even though his production didn't match some of the top guys uh sack wise being up there at number two in qb hits is a huge game changer because it can do things for the game that you know a lot of people can't do um 16.5 is a lot of million dollars is a lot of cap for one person and do I think he's worth the money yes but that's again this is a huge but this is a, a extremely important but yes I think Judon's worth the money but not from the Ravens and and I wish we had the money to sign him because I don't want him to leave in the offseason but you got to think about all the money that the Ravens are about to spend to try to keep the core of this team intact. Lamar, Stanley, uh, Andrews, Humphreys, uh, Big O coming. Um, as, I'm, I'm a, Peters and, and Earl probably, you know, going to be done whenever their contracts are up. But just thinking of all the young talent we got that we got to sign, we can't keep them all. We can't keep them all. And if his sack numbers don't go through the roof, don't push 17, 18, 19, 20, I don't see us keeping them and paying them, you know, 16 mil plus. I don't. Is he worth the money? Yes. Is he going to get it from the Ravens? I don't think so unless he has a 17 to 22 sack season. And then still it's going to be a push to keep him because the Moss contract is going to be – Stupid dumb. Like, stupid dumb. Uh, Hump's contract's going to be up there. Stanley's contract's going to be up there. It's We just got so many good young players and we can't keep them all. And I think Judon's going to be the one unless he has a outrageous, like, defensive player of the year type season. We're not going to be able to keep him. So is he worth $16.5 million or more? Yes. Because getting after the quarterback is a, is a trait everybody can't do. And he obviously can do it even though the sacks don't show it. He can get after the QB. So I, there's no need of hating on the man because, you know, his he don't have 15-plus sacks. Them QB hits are outrageous. Outrageous. They work almost just as good to sack. You just don't have the, the yardage loss. Mentally, they hurt, and they help the defense. They hurt the offense and help the defense. So to close this out, is Judon worth $16.5 million? Yes. Is he going to get it for the Ravens? I don't think so, unless he has a, a massive year. So um, this concludes my study of Matt Judon, and I appreciate you guys for participating in the poll. And this is the finality of, of that poll. And we got football on the horizon, guys. Football on the horizon. I appreciate you guys. This is Coach Evans with Celtic Talent Films. See you when I see you. Peace. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,